Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video, I'm gonna be comparing Lanner Falcons and Tida Falcons. If you've ever watched this channel long enough, you're gonna know my favorite falcon species of all time is the Lanner Falcon. It's not my favorite to fly. It's not what I think is the best falconer bird. I definitely think that the Peregrine Falcon is the best large falcon to fly in falconry in most instances. But uh, Lanner Falcons are something I've always been passionate about and I don't hesitate to say they're my favorite for a number of reasons. However, since I've been able to have the chance now to work with a totally new species to me, uh, the Tida Falcon, that's also my new contender. These are my two favorite falcons. Uh, and I thought these would be fun to compare, not because they're similar, but because they have actually are the most radically different falcons from each other on the planet. Uh, so I want to start with the Lander Falcons, my, my, my long time passion. Lander Falcons, first of all, uh, genetically speaking, are generally regarded to kind of be the, the, the base falcon. Uh, genetic studies seem to indicate that they're kind of like where all large falcons stem from uh, during the Pleistocene. Now there's some new studies coming out that might contend with that a little bit, but basically Lanner Falcon is like, if you say Falcon, genetically speaking, that's kind of the base. Similar to, uh, kind of similar to where you would say all dogs came originally from the wolf, uh, Canis lupus, and then we've selectively bred them into all different things. Well, nature has selectively bred uh, these falcons into everything else, but the, basically that a lanner is kind of the ancestral falcon. Now, I love lanner falcons first and foremost because of their association with ancient Egypt. They are the falcon god Horus, and there are many other falcon-headed gods as well. Uh, they were kind of a supreme symbol of divinity throughout ancient Egypt, and there were many temples dedicated to them and to the god Horus. There was even mummies of falcons that were made as offerings to the god Horus. So they have a rich history, and I kind of think of Egypt as sort of being the center of their range. They did range all well throughout Eastern and Western Europe. Now that range has kind of been reduced in the modern era to more of the Mediterranean. They're found all throughout different regions of Africa, and uh, they even range over into the Middle East and uh, into uh, uh, Southeast Asia. So they're a very widespread falcon. Of all the large falcons, they have the lowest wing loading. Now wing loading means how much weight do you have compared to the amount of lift that your wings produce. So the more weight you have compared to that lift, the higher the wing loading. The less weight you have, the lower the wing loading, the more buoyant you are. And a ladder falcon is an incredibly buoyant falcon with a very low wing loading. It means they can glide quite easily, they can move up, and uh, they, they don't get as much momentum but they do have a lot of swiftness and agility compared to, I mean, all large falcons have that, but uh, they are extremely buoyant. They can get up quickly. Uh, so very long, nearly oversized primary wing feathers, a very, very long, agile, maneuverable tail. Uh, they have long, skinny toes, and these toes are great for catching birds, but they're also thick enough that this is a, a, a falcon that is much more opportunistic than say a peregrine. They will go after lizards, uh, snakes, and uh, large rodents if they need to, and even, even small rabbits. Although they are primarily a bird hunter like most, uh, most, most large falcons are. So again, this is, a, this is a generalist and a buoyant bird, a bird that has no problem sitting on the ground. Uh, going down and, and scrapping on the ground, almost like a buzzard, like a like a red-tailed hawk or some of these other large uh, large uh, soaring hawks, it'll it'll sit on the ground by a watering hole and, and stake its claim. So it, it's fine. It's fine being on the ground, mantling over a fresh kill. These are things that you have a very diverse, generalized, buoyant. Everything's long, you know, long beak for a falcon, long wings, long primaries, long tail, long legs, long toes, everything. Now you compare that to a Tida falcon. Tida falcons live in Africa and traditionally only by waterfalls. Tida falcons are weird. They have the highest wing loading of any, of any large falcon. I say large falcon even though they're not very large. I have to consider them a large falcon even though they're small because for their size, they're much denser and heavier than you would expect. And they're 0.01 genetically variant from a peregrine falcon. They evolved directly from a peregrine falcon. So what does that mean? That little bit of genetic variance means that if you think of new species diverging off of certain family lines, lanner falcons are arguably the oldest 
the, the, the archetypal base falcon from basically where all other falcon lineages come from. Where a Tida falcon, it's quite the opposite, a Tida falcon would be regarded as the newest species of falcon to come into existence and to branch off from that lineage. Uh, and they are extremely heavy, high wing loading specialists. For their size, they have short wings, very narrow wings. Their tails are ridiculously short. The tarsi, their legs are short. They do have long toes, but they're, they're stocky. They're, everything is shrunk down, but also uh, not just proportionately, but disproportionately. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you enlarged a Tida Falcon to the same size as a Lanner, the Tida would still have a very short tail, uh, very short wings, very narrow wings, and an, a large oversized head. They're specialists that target little tiny birds called swifts and swallows and bats. And they like to sit next to waterfalls, specifically in the African deserts, and just sit and wait for little bats or little swifts to come out and dive and just use momentum to boom, catch their prey. And then let, like a roller coaster, let the momentum carry them back up to the side of a waterfall at where their nest or their roost is and eat their prey. As opposed to a lantern falcon, which can just flap, flap, and just woo has this buoyancy. So they're total opposite. Generalist with a lanner, specialist with a tida. Buoyant and, and long and stretch out with a lanner. Uh, dense, uh, heavy, anything but buoyant, uh, specialist with a tida. So they're two entirely different uh, birds whose ranges cross over each other. And even some of the same prey they will hunt. Lanner falcons will hunt swallows and swifts. Lanner falcons will hunt bats but they do that as part of a vast array of prey species they go after, while Tidas are just dialed into this very specific way of life at these very specific locations. Um, they are both a joy to work with. Uh, and I'm just talking about the companionship of having them around. I'm not talking about their virtues as a hunting companion. I'm just saying of all the falcon species that are just to, just to handle, to work with, to hold, to have in your presence, to drive with in any way, shape, or form. The Lanner Falcon was my favorite in those areas, and now the Tida has surpassed that. These are both birds that they have this in common, that they generally have a very gentle, uh, amicable, agreeable, even friendly disposition when interacting with humans. Now that has been from any age, whether it's an old breeder bird out of a breeding project or an imprint or any parent raised, anything in between. Both of these species are very good to work with and handle. Uh, I, I In manuscripts I've read of ancient falconry texts in medieval Europe, I have seen that the lanner falcon was thought of as a beginner's bird for a new falconer. And they, they talk about, hey, it's a good bird. They're not as good of a hunter as a peregrine, but they mention, hey, they're good to learn how to teach them to stoop to the lure and learn how to hood your bird and weight management and these kind of things. Um, but I think part of it is I now knowing what I know and have experienced, I think these uh, medieval falconers understood that, hey, you know what? If you have a jeer falcon or, a, or even a saker compared to a lander, uh, could be quite a handful. Where if you're just learning and getting into it, a lanner falcon is such an agreeable bird compared to some of these other larger falcons. That, yeah, a great bird to first start to ease your way into the sport of falconry. So anyways, because these are my two favorites, lanner was always the favorite. Now, since I have both of them as my two favorites, I thought it would be interesting to compare and contrast these two a little bit. I still want to do an all-encompassing lanner falcon video where I have all the different subspecies represented. Nobody's ever done that. Uh, people don't talk about lanterns nearly enough. Um, the only reason why I haven't put that video together yet is I'm trying to get some help from around the world, from falconers in other countries, to get some, some B-roll footage of some of these other lanter falcon species. If you're watching this video and you work with lanter falcons at all in any way, uh, and you'd ever be willing to help supply some uh, for this, project please let me know let me know down in the comments and, and we can we can message privately and i would give you full credit in the video for any clips that you provided but i just would like to have that available for people where they could just say hey look there's a video that shows all the subspecies of lander falcons and explains them and actually has footage to uh, also go with that instead of just pictures out of field guides but anyways i hope you enjoyed this video kind of the first actual video video of the year i have a lot in the works half filmed ones from book reviews to 
to product reviews to training techniques. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff planned for this new year, but uh, let me know your comments and ideas down below. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And as always, happy hockey.